<laughs> All right, welcome back to your balanced diet of teletainment. Now, in Nigeria, approximately we get almost 3.2 million people with the live with HIV and AIDS. Now, imagine how alarming that statistic be. And also, in a country like ours, where they're very conservative, we they actually frown when people talk about issues like sex. But this particular person where we get inside the house, Dr. Masai, change the dynamics. They come. There is nothing wrong in talking about them and let's preach how to practice safe sex. And that's now why we bring her inside the house. She's now public health and policy, policy expert. Join me, welcome Florida Uzuaru inside the house. Good to have you. Thank you. Welcome to the show, Florida. Thank you. All right. Okay. So, um, I, I, want, I want to know, I mean, because in young people like you and I, a lot of times people, they try to avoid certain talks like this. Mm. Why you decide to venture into this particular path of your career? Why you decide to, to go into talking about sex education and trying to educate people on the right way to go in terms of um, living a healthier lives and avoiding certain um, diseases that can be caused from having intercourse? Okay, so um, my experience started with you know growing up, not having somebody to talk to. I mean, my mother is relatively liberal in terms of she's not this kind of person that says close leg, close leg, close that kind of thing. But you know, it wasn't as if she wasn't saying it, but she wasn't hammering on it. Uh, but there still there wasn't really anybody I could talk to my sister. My elder sister was very, um, she was very religious. So there was no conversation or that kind with her. And then, so I grew up not having anybody to talk to. So um, I then, I think this was in 2016, uh, my youngest sister uh, came to me and was asking me about contraceptives. And for me, it was like, wow. So I don't reach sideways, person they act about contraceptives. You know, that kind of conversation was just not something we have for us. So I was really, really impressed, you know, that she was able to come to me. And so I kind of imagined, you know, what is happening with all the other people um, who, you know, like me growing up, not get person to talk to. So I was like, okay, fine. Let me try and be that person, you know, that they can talk to. And so that's how we start. All right, now <laughs> yeah. let's go back to okay. what you did. Now you are the CEO of Slide Safe. Yes. Tell us more about Slide Safe. Okay, so um, what Slide Safe does is that uh, we give people opportunity to uh, anonymously request for sexual health products. And that's, that's like uh, condoms and uh, test kits uh, for, H for STI, that's sexually transmitted infections. So and when they request, you know, they get to get, uh, deliver it in a discreet manner so that nobody really knows what it is that they are, they are getting. Uh, the delivery company we work with don't ask them for their name. They don't know what it is that they are dispatching to, to the person. So it's very, very uh, discreet and very, very anonymous. So people's privacy is basically protected. So that is the main thing that we wanted to do with SliceSafe uh, because there's not much of that uh, sort of uh, service around uh, in Nigeria that allows you to have that sort of way that really protects your, your privacy. I mean, the, the hospitals and their pharmacies, they are there, you know, but it's not that sort of way that, you know, that interface is still there. That person with the fear, say, that ah, person go know my face, you know, it's still there. So that's, um, that's basically what we did with SliceSafe, yeah. Okay, now, so if we talk of um, healthy life, healthy sexual life for, mm. for partners that are officially together, and uh, we know say sometimes some people, because of the kind of um, abuse we then get from childhood, they find mm. it difficult to, to actually enjoy a mm. healthy sex life in their relationship. Mm. Do you get any situ solution to that kind of situation? Mm. Maybe the person was abused by a nanny or even by their mm. papa or their brother, okay. and right now... It is difficult. Every time that they fear, they like say that they rape them or like okay. say something. It get anything way on that they do for okay. those kind of people. Okay, first of all, I want to say there's a lot of misconception about you know people having problems. Sex has to do with abuse. The kind of environment we grew up in already, you know, without any extra assault happening, is enough to get people very tight, you know, about sex. So many people think it's normal to have guilt about having sex because that's the way they've grown up. So even if you've never been abused in your life, you know, any sort of sexual abuse, you can still have problems with relaxing to have sex because of the way, uh, the upbringing that, you know, um, we generally encounter. And also people who have been abused can also not have problems having sex, you know, because that's, there's so many misconceptions that if you're tight, you know, about sex, if you're frigid, ah, that means you were abused. It doesn't actually follow. People who have never been abused can be very frigid during sex, and people who have been abused can also be very, you know, fine because they're able to get past it. So it's completely different. Uh, no, be the same 
the matter, yeah. So, but when someone has uh, um, has been sexually abused, we basically explain that you know, first of all, go get help, you know, so that at least to avoid pregnancy and to avoid uh, infections, uh, because most of the time when people when people are raped, nobody takes care to make sure that you're protected. So you want to make sure that at least that side is taken care of. Then you have to go on the go psychological or counseling. You know, it takes time, Sha. But at least if you have somebody that you can talk to, family or trained therapist, it helps to get over it. But the most important thing is to realize that you can still enjoy sex regardless of what happened to you. And I say this because I myself have been um, abused and I was able to, you know, I have very fun sex. It doesn't, doesn't really bother me. It's not as if like everything is like completely gone. Once in a while you kind of feel something, but you know that there is a life after a sexual assault. So basically that's... You yeah. know what, now you come as I talk, say slide safe, get, um, did they provide kits to people, uh, yeah. or rather some um, sex tools where if you actually help them. Mm. Now let's break it down now. Mm. Let's talk about the The kits. things with the inside out. Yes. <laughs> okay. How do you educate people on how to use it? Because yeah. initially, it get reason why they're not they're exposed to kids yeah. like that. Yeah. So, yeah, sex education is very low. As in, we know how to talk about everybody have sex, but how to do it in, a, in, the, in the way that is protective, mm, not so much. You know, so we had to do a lot of uh, counseling. Uh, we have, and an, we, when, okay, let me use for example now when somebody makes an order mm -hmm. on, our, on our website, right? So we send you an email, and part of the email that includes is a video and an audio counseling. Uh, we call it pre testing counseling because we want you to understand what it is that you're doing. Because it's not just that you test once. So that's one of the wildlife we kind of face. People think, oh, that HIV test that I did two years ago is enough for me. But it's not enough, you know, because especially if you're frequently having sex, especially especially if you're frequently having sex with different people. You know, you really need to regularly check yourself. So it's just basically to, improve, you know, get that thinking. People, they know, say, nobody say, I do HIV test two years ago. That one, you don't do me. Or don't even cover. five years. Or even for some people, they are like 40s. They have never done any HIV test before. And they think, oh, the person that I, oh, I'm only, I'm only with clean people. Mm -hmm. So it's fine. You know, so that one doesn't really happen. So we Take the time to explain to them. So we do a video and audio so that you don't be feeling shy that ah, somebody is talking Looking to you face to face. Mm -hmm. You know, kind of relax, do it at your own time, do it at your own pace and just learn. And after you do the, uh, the you know, the pre-testing counseling, then we show you a uh, video how to do the test. So you actually see, you know, how it's done and it's a very easy you know, to so get done. So this test, what does it do? Okay, it tests for HIV, uh, hepatitis B, and syphilis. So what happens is that if, if you have been uh, vaccinated for hepatitis B, uh, you, then you don't need the hepatitis B test kit. But if you haven't been vaccinated or if you've had hepatitis B, ever you know you, uh, uh, vaccination doesn't quite work for you so you have to you know make sure you know that you keep protected by testing and the, the other thing that we test for is syphilis syphilis is something that we don't really pay a lot of attention to mm -hmm. but the problem with syphilis and chlamydia and all these kind of infections is that even though is they easy to treat them if you have them your chances of having hiv is actually quite high like mm -hmm. two to five times higher mm -hmm. than the normal person who doesn't have uh, them mm -hmm. so they and they're very easy to get uh, we call them contacts especially syphilis contacts hiv mm -hmm. sorry contact sti meaning you don't actually have to have sex to get it mm -hmm. you know you just have to have a sexual contact uh, with someone who has it to get it. So let's take the condom part, sorry. Let's just take the condom part. Mm. Because I follow you on Instagram yeah. and on Facebook yeah. and I see how openly you talk about it. Yeah. And I know how much people, they attack you. Now we, presently, if you gather people together, they will tell you, say, mm, using, the, um, using rubber, yeah. you know, they actually help anybody anymore. You know, they solve anything. Yeah. How do you change that person's mindset? Um, well, there are people who don't, who in their mind, they've told themselves, like, I might live a condomless life. Uh, if it's a man who is saying that, I usually look at the woman he's having sex and like, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing with this human being? You know, because it's... But you know, some men will tell you that I'm not used to it because if I use it, I will uh, have infection. 
Well, some and people for the in addition to that, some people tell you they are sensitive. Say they uh -huh. reduce sensitivity. They, re they reduce the sensitive the sensitive pleasure that they get. Yeah, very some true. other people they also yeah. talk say they react. Really, women they tell mm -hmm. you they react to certain kinds of condoms. Yes. So true. So in that mm. kind of situation, how yes. you go feel handle them to answer True. There is actually uh, people who react to latex. Mm -hmm. It's not just a, in condom as in general. General. They react to latex, but it's not everybody who is saying that. You know they are they're reacting to con to condom is actually reacting to condom but if someone does say i react to latex then there are known latex condoms like the female condom that is in the market it's not latex now that's the issue mm. because a lot of women don't even start to use, use this female condom now Maybe a lot of women they shy away from, from, from even wanting <laughs> to be scared that just say, going. So what, because because anything yeah. with, anything that has to do with entering a woman's yes. body people mm. are very sensitive they say i beg if not be the man who come they enter mm. not should enter mm. I'd rather let the man wear the <laughs> wear the umbrella. I be the raincoat where he's supposed mm. to wear. Mm -hmm. So yeah. in that kind of situation, because and the mentality we we'll get for Africa mm. be that this one way they bring female condom inside. It's oh, you both people's way of doing it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes, but if, imagine you tell me say make a pussy yeah. when I be man kukumba. Oh mm. boy, I go tell you say hold it. Yeah, but it's I mean, it's just the mentality. Mm. The truth is that it's actually in true is actually mentality ah. because if you can talk and talk and mm. talk today, best mm. way no war here, no war here. Yeah, but the then. truth is that it's actually safe. Uh, female condoms is actually safe. And the beauty, the beautiful thing about female condoms is you can actually wear it eight hours before intercourse. So you don't have maybe like you don't plan a uh, date. Say this thing mm. will happen tonight. Eight hours. You just wear around eight hours. Go. Do you understand? People and still have issues because even to use uh, the tampon when, yeah. a, when a sanitary oh, towel we have to insert, a lot of people frown away from me. Like I talk, even yeah. the man kokumba. Yeah, it's, 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 there's a lot of education, true, that needs to happen. Personally, uh, um, I, 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 I bleed heavily, so I, it's, not in, it's not enough for me to just use sanitary pad. I yeah. have to use sanitary pad and tampon, you know, to be able not to get uh, accidents and everything. I know in the beginning I was feeling, ah, this thing that is entering my body. But after I got used to it, it's like, ah, in fact, I remember the first time I actually used it. I didn't know how to do it. I had to ask my husband to help me insert the tampon because I didn't know how to do it. And he did it afterwards i just you know do it myself it takes people to like realize it nothing do you nothing will happen you know but the one has to always, have you have to try it yes you now, have to I have talk about some of the products where they use now yeah. for this this test kit where you get the mm. product how you they manage to stay consistent at the quality of yeah. test kits where you they get because yeah. I, don't, I, I don't know whether you didn't produce them yourself or whether you get company where they import them from how do you keep the quality consistent. Yeah, right now I'm using the same uh, manufacturer. I have, I, you know, when, once I found the manufacturer that was good for me, I started using the same manufacturer. Then for the HIV one, I'm using the one that the the, the brand that was recommended by WHO as you know the brand that is good for. At least the good thing about this one is they were actually tested. Uh, with African uh, population because it's not every brand that actually gets tested to know that, okay, this one is actually good for us. So there was actually uh, research that was done and found, okay, this actually works for the African population. So that's the one that I use. Fantastic. Uh, and also it. one of yeah. your mission now to mm. let people know that there is nothing wrong in talking about sex. That one, yeah. And, <laughs> wait, sorry, and I know, say, every business gets yeah. their own challenges. Mm. How long slides saved on day in existence? And tell us some of the challenges you actually face. Uh, okay, so um, slide safe, uh, as it is today, started in 2007. And uh, one of the problems we actually had was how to communicate what we were doing. Because you know, so many people would be like, oh, you're telling people to go out and have sex. Mm -hmm. That kind of wahala. <laughs> it's like you're telling people to go out and have sex. And people are very, very sensitive. You know, that... Very well, religious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and there was even one lady that sent me a message on Facebook that was telling me that I shouldn't be saying that sex is stigmatized in Africa. It's not stigmatized. You just don't want people who are not married to have sex. I said, but they are having sex, are they not? <laughs> But the truth is that they are having sex, so it's actually difficult, you know, to have that communication, you know, that fits in with being sensitive to the culture and also not offending people. Uh, but it's, it's taking some time and we've come to the point of, okay, this is how we think this kind of communication works for everybody, it works for us, it works for... We don't want to be hypocritical and be like, oh, abstinence, abstinence, when we know that at the end of the day... <laughs> Besides, what people actually call abstinence is actually not abstinence. So okay. we don't want to have to go into preaching that thing. So just, if you need this product, use it. And also, particularly when you consider um, that um, syphilis, is, uh, example, is not actually something you actually need to technically mm -hmm. have sex, you know, with the penetration or anything like that. We say, 
because a lot of people will come to you and say, I'm not having sex. It's fine. It's true. We know you're not having sex, but just well, test. Just test. Mm -hmm. you know, just test, just in case. I'm not having sex. It's fine. Mm -hmm. We're not quarreling with you whether you're having sex or not. Very quickly, I would like to ask yeah, because like um, I, don't, I, I don't know whether or not they also and, um, let people know healthy ways or ways to spice up their sex life. Because, yeah. you know, say for Nigeria, a lot of couples have boring sex life. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them, they try to hide them. Mm -hmm. And this brings to question sex toys. Yes. What be your opinion about sex toys mm. in a relationship? My own personal opinion. Professionally. <laughs> okay. My own personal opinion, I have plenty. I have lots of sex toys. Uh -huh. I think well, that they also give, uh, yeah, they also I sell have. sex toys. No, no, we well. don't. But okay. I have, you know, I personally have. I think the first time I bought was in 2011. That's when I bought and I've, since then I've been buying. And your husband are uh, great. Yeah, we use it together. Was it a vibrator? Uh, the first one was a bullet. It's what is called a bullet. It's very small, something yeah. like that. Yeah. So the bullet is it's very good. I, I don't want okay. to. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then the second was it was a rabbit, and the, the the third one that I bought was a vibrator. So we actually use it together. It's not something that we use differently. I actually like the fact that you know when you do when you're using it with your partner, all you just have to do is just hand over the sex toys to him and just relax, and he does the work. Because people are actually just concerned relax. about you getting addicted to that to the, to the sex toys and then leaving the natural way of doing it. Um, I don't. Okay, so for me, eh, my personal opinion on this is that. Your natural sex life has got to be really bad for you to move away from it and be addicted to the, 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 the sex one. toy. Because if it's good, you won't do that. So if, you're, if, if what's going on is that the, the normal way you might be having sex without sex toy is not good, try and fix that. Do you understand? Because getting a sex toy doesn't actually fix it. It's just a temporary something. It's supposed to be like spice, something you use to spice up. Not to be like the main you know, course, you understand. So if, 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 and, and another thing I wanted to say, communication is, is very key. And I'm saying this, you know, as a professional and as a pers personal person, the first time I started telling my husband, this is what to do that I like. It wasn't the first time we had sex. This was like after some time. And you now have to get to the point to start building the confidence to be able to tell him because he's not a mind reader, even him himself. See, a lot of men like to, like, they know they sabi, they sabi. A lot of them know sabi. Mm. They well, know sabi. Because of time, so it's very so important to communicate yeah. with you your partner. To communicate. Very important to communicate with them. Yes. But, okay, so now I'm going like to ask your customers, are yeah. they more female, more of male? Or is, it, is there a balance? Yeah. In the, funny enough, in the, when we started, we thought this was a female market, that we were, you know, really going to the female uh -huh. world. Funny enough, right now the men are overtaking the the, the I, I guess that's what because I know I know yeah. a couple of my friends when they're men where they actually patronize, they actually go now. They, yeah. The wives will send them go there yeah. and answer. Yeah. And, and no, but it's it's it. a matter of the same stigma that women face. Men also face it. Mm -hmm. It's not as as much as the the female, of course, but the men also have that issue. And also Talking the about the stigma. Yeah. Let's go back to your communication yeah. and the um, statement. Now I remember one time I treated it on the radio and a mm. lot of women men call say my husband even though say i tell him say now like this i want him he know they listen to me mm. in some cases my husband will tell me say oh you don't go meet where he tell you say now like this supposed to do mm. so how important especially as you don't try to build that level of communication between you and your husband mm. the day and how can women strategically let their husband know say come this thing is not good this way is good the way you communicate is actually very important, as, more, as important as what it's, it is that you're saying. Um, nobody likes being told uh, the sex is bad because of you. Nobody really likes that. So you want to communicate in a way that doesn't put the other person on a defensive side where they want to come and start, uh, it's not me, it's you. That sort of, com that basically shuts down communication. At the end of the day, both of them start getting angry and nothing is being done. So it's really, really, the, the style you use to approach it, you, uh, let's just do this together. Let us do it. I will enjoy it, you will enjoy it. Because nobody wants to be feeling like, ah, this one, or maybe this woman is, every time she's with me, she's thinking about all these other people that she could have been, you know, that sort of thing. So it really, really matters. And of course, if if the person is this per that is difficult to talk to, you may want to introduce it gradually rather than to carry everything and dump on him at the, sa at the same time. What a situation where yeah. two partners, partner A has high libido and partner yeah. B mm, has doesn't. low libido. Yeah. Now, how they go take balance? Um, because also in that same situation, if you get some men where they rigid, mm. where if they want to get romantic or get sexual, they like to turn off the light. Mm. They like me do my just stay, no make noise. Bukum. If you do mm. bukum, it is a big trouble. Yeah. Well. I think there's a problem with the relationship beyond just the sex. 
Do you understand? Because if you get to the point where you cannot talk to your partner, your problem passes. There's a problem. You, can, you mm -hmm. understand? It passes. So fix your relationship. And when you fix your relationship, it's easier to fix the, the sex. Do you understand? So if you have a partner that doesn't listen to you, there's a big relationship problem. So you want to start by addressing that wahala first before you then go on. Because without that communication, you can't have good sex. You cannot. It's just impossible. If somebody wants to switch off lights. The other person wants light on. It won't, it won't work. Do you understand? And then before you know it, that problem uh, spilled. Because the thing that they could have actually gotten to a compromise where maybe one day to Thursday, we'll switch off lights. The other the remaining days, we'll switch on lights. I wish we can keep you from now you to tomorrow. That's because because we need to, to keep head. talking about this, make people understand. But thank you so thank much you so for thank coming you. to the studio. Now, if everyone gets access to your kids, okay. how can they get access? So they need to go to my website, uh, www.slicesafe.ng. And, you know, all the products, they there. We get like four. Uh, two of them have con condoms, uh, what we call water-based lubricants, which I have to mention. If you're using condom, please use it together with a water-based lubricant. Don't just use it uh, alone. alone. Because even though the condoms come lubricated, especially for women, they get a little bit drier. So they need that extra lubrication to make it smooth. That's mm -hmm. actually a why a lot of women don't like uh, condoms because mm -hmm. it, the lubrication is less and they feel chafed. So use the water-based lubricant. So that comes with our packs. And also then we now have the two packs that contain okay. the test kits. Yes. Thank, Thank you so much. So well. www.slicesafe.ng <laughs> To enjoy more of these our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.